now about a motion to uh, approve the agenda. A motion to approve the agenda. comments um, and I can't remember whether we talked about the uh, uh, movement from an open house format to some of the other things but at least the Webster I'm sorry the Walter Ambrose Family Center did have kind of more of a traditional open house for their gang and Marty and, and their folks did a great job and it was really really well attended I was very honored to be there um, and uh, and then secondly I want to thank uh, Dr. Simpson and all the other district folks and my board colleagues who have been attending the community information nights at our various <laughs> schools. I know I made the one at the Walter Ambrose Family Center, um, but I haven't been any since, so I apologize if I didn't see any of you at the other ones in my, my absence. I'm um, going to try to make at least one more of those before they finish up, but I appreciate the fact that even though we may only have seven eight to ten fifteen people there that still people were reaching out to and the effort i think is is uh is well intended and and the fact that we're doing them i think is, is sends a good sends a good message to the community so thank you for everybody who's been attending this i mean i noticed too that we had to do the public comment oh i'm so sorry time. yes um, um, let's finish okay. celebrations and then we'll pass awesome. on um, I, I would absolutely echo that and thank John too. I know you're putting a lot of time into this and I'm hearing a lot of good comments um, through social media. Um, the high school had an open house and I wanted to thank Kathy Vesperini for writing a quick welcome that I could give. We got oohs and ahs when they heard about the scholarship money that they had earned last year. Um, and we had a um, Edgar Road September Fest and the whole crowd was full of families making connections which was great. And then the high school is bringing colleges in all the time. So my daughter went to her first um, Jesuit excellence tour. So it was great that she has that opportunity to go to those events at her high school. That's great. So I will just echo again, I went to the Hudson Forum, which I don't know if any of the others have been as well attended, but it was really well attended. And really good questions that really made you think about what some of the issues are. Um, and I also attended the high school open house, which was great. <coughs> you did a great job. Okay. Kita, um, is it okay if I share the letter? Sure, absolutely. Um, this is vicar it's sort of vicariously my celebration. Um, my daughter's on the dance team, and some members of the dance team, and the soccer team went to watch you on September night. Anyway, they had a um, special needs, kind of like an Olympics, sort of, it was called the Try My Try. Yeah, like a triathlon. Try, yeah. yeah. So anyway, they were there to cheer them on, and John shared this letter with me from a teacher in U City, and I'll just, I'll condense it. But basically he says, I just had to take a moment to write and congratulate you and your district for your students' outstanding efforts on behalf of the athletes who participated. Your cheerleaders and athletes were inspiring to watch. I'm sure these young people had other things they could have been doing on a Sunday morning, yet they were there. It seemed that everywhere I looked, there was orange and black cheering for and encouraging the kids as they participated in the triathlon. I hope you'll take the time to congratulate them on their outstanding display of citizenship and on their selfless giving of their time to make this a special day for some very special children. I know the kids had a better day because of them. So I just wanted to share that because I thought it was, there's videos of the mm -hmm. soccer team cheering the 
swimmers on and the dance team was outside on the little track and it was awesome. So I wanted to share that. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Very neat. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I thought there was um, kind of piggybacking off of what's been discussed about the safety and space meetings, a lot of good discussion. There's a lot of questions and people I think feel very uh, open and confident on that. Uh, attended the calendar committee and the building advisory committee and those went well. Okay. All right, and now we will have an opportunity for public comments since I jumped out of the order. I was not trying to deprive you of your, your three minutes, no. Mr. Beck, I okay. promise. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Dave Buck, uh, and I have a grandson in the district. Um, this is an issue that's been ongoing with me for a long time, uh, and I'm not here to criticize. Please know that. I'm just here to make a comment. Um, the cover of this week's Time magazine reads as follows. I have a master's degree, 16 years of experience, work two extra jobs, and donate blood plasma to pay the bills. I'm a teacher in America. It's a terrific cover story. And <clears throat> to me, I think we know four things. One is that the most important determinant of student success is having an outstanding teacher in the classroom. Not to take anything away from John or the board or administration, but I'm 65 and I don't remember any of those people. But I do remember the great teachers that I had who impacted me and shaped me uh, into the stellar human being you see for me today. Uh, second, there have been studies that say, what are the most valued and respected professions in society, period? And the top four are, interesting enough, nurses, military personnel, teachers, and doctors. So teachers rank way up there. There are also a very strong correlation, interestingly enough, between higher paid teachers and better performing educational school districts. There's a direct correlation between pay and performance. And the last thing, I have an MBA, I got an MBA in 1977, came to work for the Ralston Creamy Company. And I know what I was paid then, but I bet if I came today, Anybody else with a master's degree in things like business, finance, law, computer tech, data scientists, et cetera, et cetera, their beginning pay will be more than it is for a teacher. Okay? And you can uh, verify that. My point being, again, I'm not trying to be critical, but yes, I do think teachers, as a general rule, are underpaid versus the value that they deliver to their students and to society. And I wish it was different. That's my comment. I wish they got paid more. I think they deserve more. And when I see teachers, even at Bristol, which is an affluent school in this district, where really good teachers still go out in August and early September and spend more of their money, even though they get allowance, they're still spending more of their money to make sure that they get the classroom they want. And there's just something about that that I just don't like. So that's the comment. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Yeah. Would anyone else like to make a public comment? All right, then at this time, if you would turn your attention to the board calendar. Um, do you want to do celebrations from administrators? Yes, I would love to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Kathy, do you have <laughs> some? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Congratulate our three National Merit semifinalists this year, Nicholas Brown, who is serving in the Governor's Courthouse, and we expect to hear about commended students soon. Uh, the things I wanted to add to that, um, one, the Webster Groves High School is initiating a tutor program within the school that's going to be made available to the students in the school from 7.55 to 3.30 every single day. Um, there will be an opportunity for students to be tutors, um, collect A-plus hours as part of this program. There's also an opportunity for if community members are interested and have a particular area of interest, expertise, with content or anything for them to come in and go through our procedures and check the volunteer time as, as a tutor. So I just applaud the efforts of the high school to do that. Um, following along that same line, 
again, looking to you know involve community as much as possible. Just wanted to highlight that we put out some feedbacks, research, survey feedbacks recently through health and wellness. Um, the health survey has over 650 respondents. Wellness is, um, is, has a little over 500 or nearing 500 respondents. Um, so once again, we're, we're trying to solicit community feedback, get them contributing decision making, and ultimately show how their support is leading to an improved school system. Lastly, I just wanted to acknowledge um, Lamar Jackson, who's a sophomore at the high school. He completed the UMSL Bridges program, which is a program designed to help prepare kids for their future, specifically college. And it's a pretty rigorous summer program, and he was one of our kiddos who graduated this year. So that's it. All right, thank you. John, I have a quick question. Is the, in the health and wellness, is that mental health included in that, or is it just? Chris is probably best oh. able to speak to that. Um, it's everything. So there's physical, social, and mental health. Um, so the, the goal of the survey was to get perspective. There was a lot of feedback around social, emotional health. Um, the goal is to finish the program evaluation and curriculum to right for health in the traditional sense that we help and then utilize that information as we work with so that they're looking at their program, their goals, so that we can make sure that there are many goals in the future. Oh. Right. Okay, now I, I think I'm up to speed here. Board calendar. The, there are three more opportunities for the Space and Enrollment Committee Forum. Tomorrow, Wednesday, and October 1st. So as um, you all mentioned, if you haven't had an opportunity to attend that, you have three more options. Um, and then, of course, the big MSBA conference, which we're going to talk about in just a second. The next Let's Talk session is October 1 at 6 p.m. at St. Louis Road Company. Who did we, Sherry, who did we decide was attending that one? We did not yet. We did not yet. Oh, okay. Did we do a poll? That's on John. Yes. We did decide that. We did decide maybe that. Did, maybe I think that, that was the you. meeting when I was absent, and I think yes, I got a note. I know it's not you. <laughs> well, I, and it can be if somebody has something else say, came up, come up that, for I that. I'm, I'm signed up for that, I think. People, people have calendar invites for that meeting. Okay. That is David, Arnold, and Christine Okay. is the first. And then so Joe, Kita, and you are Global Brew. Okay, and if anybody has a conflict or something and needs Steve to back you up, let him know. Yes, yeah, Thank and I, I think either date of those is, is fine. So if for some reason somebody gets in a pinch, just give me a call. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to point out, John, on the calendar? Uh, no. Okay. Nothing current. There must be a conference. John? Yeah, just kind of wanted to put this on here. Uh, just wanted to have a conversation for, especially for the new folks, for Kita and Christine. Just wanted to have you have an opportunity to ask questions related to the experience of folks who have been down there a few times or a lot of times. Any any questions? Any thoughts you would say like to share? We've had um, you know take notes at the sessions that you go to, and then uh, we'll, we'll provide an opportunity for everybody to provide a brief report as to what you've attended and what you found interesting maybe could be beneficial for, for our district. Mm -hmm. Not spend a lot of time on it, but mm -hmm. just so you know, there will be a task. Yeah, a lot of times uh, we'll meet, in the if somebody wants to meet for breakfast, a lot of times we'll Sit, sit there and share and say, hey, for the morning, I'm thinking about doing this and doing this one, and we can kind of spread out, but it doesn't mean you, you can't go to the same one as somebody else if you're truly interested in it. Um, sometimes there's an hour where it's like, oh, none of these really turn me on, but then other times there's maybe three that turn you on, and it's like, I can't be three places. Um, just make sure you swipe in. You'll have a little lanyard with a, bar, with a barcode on the back of your name tag. And just make sure you swipe, and there'll be a person at, the, at each door, and then you'll get credit for attending those classes as, a, as if you want to move on to advanced or masters or of distinction. I think is the fourth one now as far as your certification. 
with the state goes. Okay. So Are there particular classes for that, or just like do all of them count? They all that? count. They all do. But there was yeah, something the, with the letters, right? Like you have to yeah. go to so many of each one. Yeah. Yeah, there's a different, there different strain, is what they call it or whatever. That it's it's like there's finance, there's governance, there's legal and blah blah, and then there's uh, trends and uh, current trends in education or something like that. There's three or four strands that uh, that your each each session falls within. And we get the booklet when we check in. Mm -hmm. It's also available, if you go to their website, you can pre-plan your it whole is. weekend and regi not register, but just kind of map out what you want to attend and when. Is there an app for that? Uh, there is. There is. There is actually there's an app or there's just the website. They have a calendar app now, too, yeah, where okay. if you select a session, it will put put it on your calendar and yeah. for and it'll give you the room that it's, it's supposed to be in, whether it's Parasol 1 or 2 or the, you know, Sycamore room or whatever it is. You know, there's like... 15 rooms that they fill up. Um, we typically gather and go to lunch both Friday and Saturday. Um, and then I think we're, is everybody going to the, the, the Stiefel dinner on Friday night? Friday night? Did you get, yeah. yeah. I am not, RSVP. but I do want to, you all probably received an email from me. Did you receive an email yes. from me? Okay, in my role as REC chair, there is a reception for board members Friday from 4.30 to 6. So I hope you all will show up and support me. <laughs> That's in the exhibit area. Correct? In the exhibit yeah, area. The exhibit and hall. you'll have time mm -hmm. to go from there to dinner. Perfect. Okay. So. And will there be two bikini ice cream there on Friday night? There will be a reception <laughs> following your dinner. Not that I'm Friday night. Night. Yes. ice cream. Bikini ice cream? Tooth kini. <laughs> not <Yeah>. zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably my fault for not explaining <laughs> that yet. Yeah. Anyway, yes, that will be after the dinner on Friday night. So if you want, I, I will be getting down uh, right now. Um, uh, my wife is actually um, going to get sworn in as a citizen on Friday. So oh, that has awesome. uh, changed my plan somewhat, but I will get down as soon as I can on uh, on Friday afternoon. Sounds good. Please Sounds tell good. her congratulations, yeah. David. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion regarding the conference? All right. I think if anybody wants to carpool, you can arrange that. Or I'm happy to arrange that. I'll send something. When out. are you going, John? I'm going to leave uh, Thursday, probably lunchtime or something. I never really thought too much about it. Okay. And you're coming back Sunday? Sunday early. I'm, I might be actually. I'll let you know. Okay. Sunday and Thursday too. Okay. Okay. Reports from Superintendent and staff. Mr. Ellerman. Good evening. Great. Tonight the board is being asked to formally approve the 2018 school district tax rates. These rates were computed in accordance with state statute and have been reviewed and approved by the state auditor's office. The commercial and residential rates are a few cents higher than last year's rates uh, to compensate for some state tax reductions in district assessed value uh, in district assessed values. These proposed rates were presented at a public hearing last Tuesday, September 18th, um, and. Uh, were also um, presented in your board materials tonight. Uh, there was no public comment uh, received at or pursuant to the public hearing. We are therefore recommending board approval of the 2018 property tax rates at this time. Uh, the various motions to accomplish that are included in your board materials. Bruce, if I could ask just a quick question. I noticed in the item number three, recommended action, that there are three different sections beginning with the current year rate computed by category as follows. Um, I'm, I'm just confused as to what each of those three sections, how they're worded and what they belong with. Because being that they're different rates, it seems like there may be some missing verbiage. I just want to make sure that if, if anyone's going to read those off, that we get the 
verb is correct. Uh, Steve, it, Steve the, one's an incidental fund, one's a teacher's fund. Oh, okay, so that's where the dividing is. Yeah, okay. One's capital projects. I'm sorry, thank you, Arnold. That, you I should have picked that up after this many years, but uh, it's a little different format looking this year than we've had with this thing. So thank you. I'll withdraw my question. <laughs> Well, you typically do the honors on this. You up for it? I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Did you have anything else to add, Mr. Eleanor? No. Okay. Uh, I would first move that the 2018 tax rate ceiling be set at $4.9245 blended and individually by category at residential $4.7955, agricultural zero, Commercial four point eight nine two four dollars. Personal property five point nine zero 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 dollars. Wait a second. second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. I would also move that the 2018 operating levy be set at a blended rate of four point nine two four five dollars and the current year rate computed by category as follows. Residential, $4.7955. Agricultural, $0. Commercial, $4.8924. Personal property, $5.90. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Big deep breath on this one since this is all one. Uh, I move that the 2018 operating levy be distributed as follows. First, the incidental fund, $3.0720, with the current rate computed by category as follows. Residential, $2.943. Agricultural, $0. Commercial, $3.0399. Personal property of $4.0475. Specific to the teacher's fund, $1.79, with the current year rate computed by category as follows. Residential, $1.790. Agricultural, zero. Commercial, $1.79. Personal property, $1.79. And specific to the capital projects fund of $0.0625. With the current year rate computed by category as follows residential zero point zero six two five dollars agricultural zero dollars commercial zero point zero six two five dollars personal property zero point zero six two five dollars well done second all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed motion carries finally I would move that the 2018 debt service levy be set at $0.5699. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. And, and team. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. All right. Ms. Dr. Wiley, Human Resources. a quick update on the Human Resources Department and what we've done over the past year. I just want to acknowledge Lenita Harrison, which is our Director of Staff Services. She's here tonight. She's um, been a great asset and um, yeah, thank her. Um, my transition, she really helped. So. Mm -hmm. Can't help her, thank her enough. Um, so we want to get started through the agenda. We'll just talk through our accomplishments for last year, identify some strengths, talk about our areas of growth, and then of course go through some teacher demographics with some supporting data charts for you. Overall, our accomplishments for 1718, um, we just we did a lot. The shares events and a lot of our efforts with regard to your goal for talent management with hiring and recruiting more diverse staff. So that event really um, was a lot of the work that we did last year and the follow-up that we um, worked on with that. Uh, we did a lot of inclusive and the rigorous uh, hiring process was very much um, increased this year. Uh, we're happy to say we have two new hires, Carol Tooley, 
um, which was the assistant and the subcoordinator uh, for, she was my assistant, she retired and Anna replaced her and we just hired Shantae who will service not just the HR office but also a portion of accounts payable in the business office. So we're happy to um, have them there. Um, if you guys remember the Raptor system that we talked about last year, it's in all schools now, it's up and running. Um, we've not had any parent complaints this year about the process or having to provide a social. Um, so we're very happy that this system is really working for our families. Um, I'm happy also to announce the road shows that we're doing. Uh, we go to each school and we have been for the past, well, since August. Um, and we're talking specifically with teachers face-to-face -face about tuition reimbursement, channel changes, FMLA, just trying to make the wonderful world of human resources um, more easy to understand and more personable um, and really have the human part of human resources come alive for the teachers and the staff that we service. Um, I also want to highlight our student teacher partnerships. Um, in all of our schools, you'll find a student teacher from one of these schools. Um, we're very happy that um, uh, we're partnered, we partnered with them. Harrisstow is, is the university that we're working on. I will be at their teacher um, induction program on Friday. Um, so I'll be in front of all of their current students of education to have conversations with them and just process with them about education and um, who we are. So we're going to try our best to develop a better partnership. They have a new dean of uh, education there at Harris. Um, so we're hoping that we'll get more student teachers from there. But again, we're trying to capture more, um, not just student teachers, but also the teachers that'll be there for their hours, the sophomores that have to come in and do their observation hours. Um, research is showing that when you get them into the district and you pull them in and you have that opportunity to learn and grow with them, that more than likely they'll be you know, more apt to apply and try to stay within the district. So um, we're happy about that partnership that we've established there and we'll keep keep that going. Um, in addition, we did a lot of hard work with the preschool teachers um, in providing their salary to be commensurate with their K-12 peers, and we're very happy about that. I just met with them yesterday, not yesterday, yesterday was Sunday. I met with them last week, um, and we processed through some of the benefits of being on the salary schedule and processed through some of the things that they have as offering that they didn't have before, and they were very grateful for that opportunity. So we're happy about the things we were able to accomplish last year. Um, so for our continued growth, um, there's a lot. Um, however, we're, we are up to the challenge. We want to continue to have uh, and implement a plan to recruit and hire professional staff of color. So we'll continue working with that. Um, we want to make our HR management programs more transparent, um, continual, and accessible. Right now, it's kind of a hidden veil. You know, you come in, we give you paperwork, you wait on us to call you and tell you what you have. Um, so we're trying to figure out a better way to be streamlined, but also to maintain the confidentiality that is needed in the HR office. Um, we also, a huge piece for us, that second bullet from the bottom, is the continued development and communication of processes for internal interviews and or staff transfers. Right now, we don't have a clear or succinct process. If I'm a teacher at Bristol, but there's an opening at Clark, um, and I want to go there, what is their transfer process? Um, what does that look like? Do we offer it internally to our teachers first before we post it externally? If so, we start an interview. Like, what does that look like? We really don't have a clear process related to that. So we're going to spend some time this year really talking about that and trying to devise a process that would be clear, again, transparent, again, you know, one that is going to be equitable and fair for all teachers involved. Uh, we'll involve uh, the issues committee as well as a couple of other committees to see what their thoughts are. I'm currently pulling data from other districts to see what processes they have in place to see what we can use that's comparable or of what's new that we can bring to the table, but that's definitely um, an, a goal for us. In addition to the continued work for the committees for stipends and supplemental agreements, um, we entered into that work last year and it was, I think, more than what we thought <laughs> initially, um, just trying to get a streamlined process on how stipends and supplementals are issued. You know, um, Is there an evaluation process a part of that? Um, what does that look like? Is our stipend and supplemental payments com comparative to the other districts? Um, so we started that work. Uh, Bruce um, has been working primarily with getting the, um, the, the formula together for us to calculate those things and have them mapped out. And we started with the athletics, and so now we're going to be moving forward with some of the other work, and the evaluation piece will be a crucial portion of that. How do we know 
that what you're doing with our students is beneficial or crucial? What does that look like? What kind of feedback do we provide to them on an annual basis? Um, so that'll be another huge project for us to continue to work on and see where it leads us this year um, in order for us to have a clear you know, committee of people that are devising this process so that everybody is aware of, of what's happening. Currently, a, a predominantly, um, you'll you notice in the board reports, our stipends and supplementals are predominantly at the high school and there's a portion at Hickson, but we really don't have a lot of our elementary schools and want to try to be as equitable as we can with regard to that. Um, this is just some demographics. Currently, you'll see from last year to this year kind of where we are, the number of teachers that we've hired, the breakdown um, for uh, race, and then in addition to female teachers and our male teachers, you'll see an increase of our African American population for teachers, as well as we hired one Hispanic teacher, Catalina Rincon. She's teaching Spanish at Hickson and at the high school. Um, in addition to our female teachers, and then our male teachers are pretty kind of maintained themselves at about 97. But again, if you look at the African American percentage there, we did have some increase there with having a more diverse staff um, that we're excited about. Um, this next graph just kind of gives you a little bit of the new higher demographic information. So uh, we hired three um, administrators um, and kind of where they mapped out. Um, and then for our teachers, we hired 36 certified teachers. This does not include our um, Am Ambrose teachers, um, but that's the number that we hired and then our total number of African American and then um, white. Um, one celebration that we can have is that for the 17, 18 new hire group, None of our early hires, and when I say early hires, I mean hires prior to April, um, none of them were people of color. If we hired a person of color, historically, it was kind of like a later hire, maybe around May, June. But our, our early hires um, for 18, 19, they, nine of the 22 that we hired prior to April were people of color. Um, and so we were able to, that was an improvement that we had. We also noticed that continually um, the applicants, the African American applicants that we do hire, all of them mostly, mostly have high advanced degrees, at least the masters, a number of them were at a masters plus 30. Um, and so that's um, still something that um, clearly, you know, we are looking for those teachers that have that education and that experience. Um, I just wanted to point out some promising practices that I've been doing a lot of research. Um, the Learning Policy Institute, I've been reading a lot that they have in their reports related to um, hiring a diverse staff and the benefits of that and what that means for students and the, the impact on instruction. And um, what we do know and what they're currently saying is that most of the African American applicants hiring early is better. Um, and then also developing a relationship with them, not just having a cold, um, hiring process where you just receive an application, which is why I think that Shares event was so successful because we didn't just say come to us and sit down, you know, and, and it wasn't just an informal process. It was really a, a process for us to get to know them and for them, for us, you know, for them to get to know us. We shared ourselves. We were vulnerable with them. We gave them feedback. Um, so I was happy when I was reading through some of the things and those, um, the research that those were some practices that we currently have in place. Um, they also talked about how um, student teacher placement is crucial as well. That again, back to student teachers, the more you get them in, you show them the ropes, you can make the connections with them, they make the connection with you, that they'll more than likely stay with you. Um, the induction process was crucial. So not just hiring them, but once you get diverse candidates to the door, how do you support them after that? What does that look like? What does that feel like? How do you continue to have that relationship with them? I'm happy to say that here um, we check in with all of our applicants, all of our new applicants. I've visited them, gone by the building, just popped by the door, um, let them know that I'm here um, to process with them. I present with them once already formally um, for their new teacher training. So just, again, still trying to be in front of them and process with them and let them know we're happy that they're here. And if they need anything, we'll be happy to, happy to support them through their process. Um, data also shows that um, teachers of color um, have a greater success or data-wise have shown a greater success with moving the achievement gap or closing that achievement gap for students of color. Um, again, that relationship is there. When surveyed, didn't matter if it was a student of color or not, but all students benefited from having a diverse person in front of them as their instructor. Again, the relationship, again, the conversation, again, the connectedness. As, as, as Dave Love said, the teacher is the, you know, that they're on the front level. You know, they're right there with the kids. 
And as much as they can connect with kids and as much as they can provide a warm environment, I think that's beneficial. Um, and that can come from any teacher, doesn't have to be a teacher of color. But these are some research points that I found kind of in my, as I looked through, you know, what are we doing and what can we continue to do to do better with regard to that. Um, the next couple of slides are just some supporting data slides. You'll see um, the percentage of our teachers with master's degree. Again, it went down just a bit. Um, again, knowing that we had, since we've had over 30 new hires, right, we had over 30 retirements or, or resignations. And so with that, some of your teachers that were kind of at the master's plus 50 PhD level, a number of them retired, so you'll notice a bit of a decline there. Um, and then the average years of experience, again, that number dropped as well. But again, we had about, when you add the Ambrose teachers, we had about 40 certified people that we hired that left and then we hired a new group and so that caused a little bit of a decline there, which is which is not uncommon um, when you're hiring that number of people. Um, with regard to the student teacher ratios, you'll see the K-8 number dropped a little bit, but also you'll notice that that high school number increased and we really scrubbed high school staffing <laughs> this past year. We met, um, I don't know how many times, maybe four or five times as a group in addition to some outside um, conversations that we had, um, we, we do want to make sure that our numbers are still um, equitable, that kids are still in a, in a small enough environment so they can be reached. However, if you look at that discrepancy that occurred, that 9, 12, that their, their class sizes were smaller than our elementary class sizes. And so um, how can we continue to try to be as equitable as we can? In addition, they, this new group of freshmen that came in was a large group. Um, larger than the, the other groups that they currently have. So that also um, caused that increase there. Um, but we will continue to go through that process with the high school, again, knowing that they have 100 plus staff members there, right? And so what does that look like annually as we take a look at students, how they're coming in and staffing, et cetera. A number of our high school teachers are also being shared at Steger. Um, which is new um, for some teachers. Um, and again, we're looking at numbers, we're looking at processes, and we're trying to find a support in place somewhere we can. Sandy, quick yes. question before we move from that. The Missouri numbers there, are those grade specific or is that all K-12? That's K-12. So it's a K-12 average, yeah. even though they may have similar other breaks, you know, schools may have other breaks, the, the way you presented it. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, this slide here just kind of gives more of a breakdown of our certificated staff so that you know how many teachers there. If you'll notice the counselor number went up by one, but you also notice the social worker number went down one at Hickson. Um, instead of hiring, their social worker retired, and instead of hiring a social worker, she hired another counselor. So that's why that kind of was a switch there. In addition, you'll notice that administrators went up one, um, and then if you'll notice the teachers um, instead of being showing three increases, it only showed two, and that's because Cliff Ice was, some, for some reason, we were coding him as a teacher, but he's not. He's, he's, he's an assistant activities director. He's more at an administrative level. So we wanted to reflect that there in that area under administrative versus placing him as a teacher, which is why those numbers kind of look the way that they do. Um, but other than that, everything else is pretty commensurate as to what it was last year. Um, this last slide kind of gives you, I'm um, not last slide, I'm sorry, the slide before the last. Uh, this is our numbers of support staff there. We did have um, an increase um, by two, and I'll just kind of jump to that next slide that kind of explains that. We hired a part-time uh, lead sub-nurse. That sub-nurse is going to help us with Camp Wyman in addition to supporting a number of district initiatives through the health committee, et cetera, as well as um, subbing for our nurses. There'll be a cost savings there because right now we pay maximum nurse finders about 40 bucks an hour right now for a sub-nurse. Um, and so that'll definitely be a cost savings for us. In addition, there was an ad for a nightly custodian at the high school. Um, just the sheer... I mean, the high school is like a machine, right? It runs 24-7. Um, and in order for that supervisor to be as effective as he could be, we needed to make some adjustments there to add that. And then the other FTE are added based on numbers. Um, Edgar Road, we all know, is definitely growing. Um, the uh, PE at Hickson, um, she definitely needed that in order to have a modified schedule for all kids to be, to be a recipient of that and not have to pull between gifted or something else. And then Spanish, those 
our Spanish numbers are growing. Um, so that point eight is a point four at Hickson and a point four at the high school. There was no way we could give overloads um, to those teachers. It would have just been too much to try to provide that. Because again, their courses, their class sizes are already large as well because kids are just, our Spanish numbers as well as our German numbers are really, are really growing. And that's it that I have. Are there any questions or comments, anything? Yes. Uh, just a, a couple of quick questions on the two that are kind of near and dear to my heart on the, on the hiring process and the internal candidate thing. Mm -hmm. Are you, is it the hope to get that in place before like things start to move in the spring? Or? Yes, okay. that's the hope. Um, John and I have processed about getting an earlier issues meeting on the calendar, maybe in October, okay. but that'll be the hope. Okay, yeah. and, the, and the supplemental salary is kind of the same thing before all that stuff gets approved before the next summer I cross my fingers yes okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> yes Sandy I'll just make a comment I'm, I'm always very um, pleased with the number of the highly qualified and highly educated mm -hmm. staff that we have um, and the average age of teaching I think that's a really really um, impactful number and I think I would I would put that up against probably most of the districts in the entire area, much less across the state, to have 85, consistently 80 plus percentage in the last several years, four or five years, probably 85 as an average percent of, of our teachers having master's degrees or above. I think that's phenomenal. And uh, while we have made an effort to hire new teachers because of retirements and other things like that, to, to, to maintain an average teaching experience of 14, 15 years across the board, I think that's also really, really cool yeah. to see. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's been a, it's, I think that's something that we continue to tout. Yeah. And I appreciate that. We um, did a lot of work last year with just trying to figure out how can we support teachers and letting us know when they are exiting. You know, the re decision to retire is a hard one. It's a complex decision to make. No one makes it easy. Well, some people do, right? But for the most part, it's hard. And so uh, Lanita did some road shows where we went by all the schools and just had conversations and asked. And I think that personal connection that we're continuing to try to make, I think that's gonna be what's gonna help us because the more we know early, the better we can plan and you can get those teachers who are you know, who have the master's degree, who have the experience, you're not beating the clock in March before contracts are issued. So I think that's helpful. We'll do that again. It's already set, and we'll get some dates out there for that. But I think that'll be very helpful. And those people can reach out and say, can you help me understand what my options are, yes. where my financial situation would be if I did choose to retire this year, the next year, or the following? And because I mean that's with their retirement system, that's that can be some pretty complicated yes. calculations. And yes. I mean, we even had a few people that love to hang on and teach, but it was probably hurting themselves mm -hmm. in the long run by doing so. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we want them to see the door because they're great folks. Right. Some have been here a long time. Right. But uh, it's if it's to their benefit, I honestly wouldn't blame them for mm -hmm. going ahead and retiring if that's going to be financially the most beneficial to them. That makes sense. For comments, questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Safety and space update. All right, so I, I gave you all a, a handout this evening. I'm sorry I didn't get it to you sooner. We spoke with Scott Leopold, who's the project lead, and um, Karen today um, regarding just finalizing some, kind of a tentative timeline. Um, Myself, Bruce, and Kathy were on a conference call. We'll be on a conference call every Monday with them through the project. Uh, this is what we created, so I'm going to kind of walk through it for you, get your get your reaction to it. If you feel like there's something that's really off or amiss, this is you know an opportunity not to speak now for hold your peace, but an opportunity for you to share on that. Um, and then I have a, a, a few specific items that I'd like to get your feedback on. So first, from a, a, from a holistic standpoint, um, I want, want you to know that a priority with all of this and the processes, and I thank you guys for sharing celebrations, has been like heavy community involvement, um, transparency, not starting from any end in mind, um, and let's, let's together, let's 
try and create some priorities and some, some options that we will um, start with a broader group and we continue to boil it down and until we, we feel like we feel good about what we've created. So the, the first thing, the 24th, the first you mentioned, Amy mentioned, we'll finish up our community forums, forums seven, eight, and nine, that doesn't include other uh, speaking things that I've done um, about safety in space, but the last one will be at Bristol a week from tonight. Um, following that, what we've told the community in each of these forums is that once we've heard from everybody, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we reach out to the broader audience. So Kathy has worked with us to put together a, uh, an article that'll go in the Times this coming week. We'll certainly blast it out to families, we'll put it in social media that talks about their opportunity to contribute to the survey. So while we've had better turnout as of late, we're still not reaching the masses. And so this will give the masses, everybody in our community, our students, like Jessica, the opportunity to see uh, where do they rate these priorities. And not just the ones that we started with, but the ones that people contributed as a part of the process. Um, so that survey will run from the second, second to the ninth. Um, Scott, we've already kind of initiated talking. He's, he's going to be involved in results development. What, what their team is going to do on October 10th to 12th is they're going to come hunker down in the Webster Grove School District and they're going to meet with a bunch of focus groups, as many as we can throw in front of them uh, regarding um, possible options and what people think about possible options. So if redistricting is a, is a possible option and we redistrict, or if we add it, or if we change policies practice, what, what are people's reactions to these things? Um, so they're going to they're gonna be here for two plus days, taking as many people. And what, I'll, what I'm going to want you to do is look at some of the focus group people that we've already established and see are there any other groups or clubs or organizations that we should that we should hit. Um, in on October 22nd, so from, we're getting this feedback from community, we're going to get more feedback from community. Um, on 20, the 22nd, we're going to come before you all with an initial here are possible options. Um, and that, what, what he's strategizing at that point is not for your comment. It's kind of like administrator interviews where you just kind of listen to it, you absorb the process, you ask questions about what, the, you don't, maybe, maybe ask clarifying questions, but you kind of don't show your hand, so to speak, with what op you think about options, because um, what we'll do then is, following that, is we're gonna have, um, we're gonna place another survey back out to the community as to what do you think about these particular options. Um, they have said that they will, because they'll construct, they'll construct the survey, they said that they'll also add um, survey questions related to, so their focus is just again on the enrollment space options. Um, Bruce's group on the building advisory committee is working on some of the other things related to space, such as accessibility, um, safety issues at the school, vestibules and stuff like that. Cooperative strategies is that if you want us to add an additional layer of feedback to community regarding you know, a further development or a deeper, uh, a more prioritized list of options, we'd be happy to add that to the survey. So they were gonna survey back out to the community those things, then also host um, community forums, broader community forums on a narrow prioritized, prioritized list. Um, on the 24th and the 25th of October. On November 12th, what the plan is for them to come before the board and share these are draft final options um, that we're, you know, we're looking at right now considering all these multiple layers of feedback and community involvement. Um, then um, the presentation, once you receive that presentation, and again, we didn't really talk about what that would look like in terms of your feedback, but then that goes to the Building Advisory Committee. The Building Advisory Committee um, will receive that will receive that presentation, and then along with, and they're already going to be working towards prioritizing some of the safety and space things related. They will hear that, consider that, and ultimately determine on what are what are some draft things that we want to consider for. Um, kind of like a final draft priority list. So we, enrollment in space, we think, you know, these two to three options 
are the ones that would be good to consider. Um, safety and security, other space related, we think these would be good to consider. And so they'll make that determination. They'll narrow that list further. It, it will then go on the 15th to the Finance Advisory, or the 20th to the Finance Advisory Committee who will hear presentations on these and ultimately finalize a plan for how do we go about funding, if funding implications exist, the priorities and the different things that you want to do. Um, then, once you've, again, you've continued to narrow, you've got, these are the things that right now we want to do. This is how we're currently recommending to fund them. We go back out and have another community forum or forums, surveys for people. This is what, the, this is kind of the final draft. Um, what do you think? Tell us your honest answers. Bring a joint group of the building and finance uh, back together to then develop recommendations and options for your consideration in January, which would first be presented to you at a workshop meeting and then be um, finally developed at the 14th, on the 14th. Um, I've stressed to the group, we've talked about it in this space, that if, if there are things related to this that we feel need more thorough analysis or thought, uh, we won't we won't rush it just to meet any any dates or deadlines. We're not gonna we're not gonna do that to, to meet those dates or deadlines. Um, we did make the decision um, to originally we had put something out to ask for people to have a diverse committee to work um, help develop the recommendation. When Cooperative Strategies developed their proposal, they had something in there where they spoke to how they might do that, but they um, recommended not having a committee um, for a variety of reasons. One, if, you, if you're if you trying to select a, a group to represent the, the community, you're one, you're kind of making some assumptions that the people you select are truly representing, representing the groups for which you selected them for. Um, and also feeling like there's going to be so many layers of in-depth community feedback that you would do better to involve people, all people, as much as they want along the way. So the plan would be to tell the committee that each of them would have an opportunity to be on, a, on like one of the focus groups when we, once we select the, the focus groups, um, but they would not be the ones to ultimately make the decision on you know, the options that we bring before you. We would go through this process. So. Bruce, is there anything you wanted to add to that? No, I think you covered it all. We detailed it pretty much. We detailed it in the timeline. It's a lot of, a lot of work <laughs> to be done and being done. Yeah. Yeah. You said there was something that you wanted our feedback on? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we can do that and you could continue to process the um oh let me read that so I've engaged with a couple with district administrators thus far um maybe I'll take that one up these are currently some some groups that were recommended for focus groups so executive boards of PTOs, different equity groups, immediate neighbors of schools, senior citizens, PAC are um, parents of children who have um, identified with, uh, have IEPs in the school system. Students, teachers, person recommended those more impacted by space. Mayor, city administrators, the five different municipalities, um, emergency management, first responder groups, such as like police, fire and such. Business owners, Chamber of Commerce, Lions Rotary, pastor groups, alumni groups, the foundation, district administrators, families living in North Webster whose children attend or will attend Edgar Rotor Clark, um, you, board members, in groups of two or three, and then just trying to ensure as diverse a representation as possible. So, I was curious if there are other, other groups. And we're going to put these together over the next week or so. So, 
about uh, families who don't have, like whose kids attend private schools or don't yeah. have kids in the district? Is that up there? No, thank you. That's this one, Mayor, oh, City okay. Administrators. Okay, I'll put, um, yeah. And the private could include the home schools, oh. anybody in home schools as well. Some, I don't know if you're probably going to get specific, like like the senior groups, some of the, like Laclede Grove and what's the, thank you, what's the one up here, provision living, right, um, it's a great idea, down by Bethesda, uh, Bethesda. Bethesda, oh okay. yeah, okay, and then equity groups. I don't know if you're thinking of like the North Webster Coalition group. Um, that's an equity group, but that's kind of a neighborhood group. Great idea. In business owners, I would want to make sure you include realtors. Ooh. Good one, too. That's good. The other question I had for you is they are going to um, the plan right now is to have back-to-back -back forums in the in the middle of the week, um, 24th to the 25th. The 24th, they're basically open anytime we want, so definitely going to have an evening forum. That the plan is for the 24th. The wondering was, should the 25th be? Another evening? Should it be a breakfast? Should it be a lunch? Should we offer multiple options? I think we should because there's a lot of people who are doing home stuff, extracurricular activities, dinner, whatever. And there's there's probably people who could attend whose kids are busy at school. Yeah. <laughs> who might be able to. I think you should offer the option. Or at least vary the times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Would we be as a group, um, I guess not really welcomed at the event, but I mean, would there be encouragement for us to Absolutely. to attend and, and kind of be fly on the wall Absolutely. kind of thing? Absolutely. No, I, I would strongly encourage if you're able to attend forums. And that was one of the things when I wrote without board comment, I didn't want to, I told Kathy, I'm like, ah, it just sounds, sounds funky to say that, but I got the, I got the point because they, if, if an idea comes to you because because Scott's like my experience is it's good for the your boards to have an awareness of what the community is going to hear as options, but to try and if you, they can keep a poker face or stuff because he said it could be it could be a written memo or it could be in front of them, but to not ask clarifying he didn't use that language but ask clarifying questions, but allow the community to react before it kind of comes back to you so that if their community loves something, they're like, oh, the board doesn't like it, or, you know, so-and-so mentioned they didn't like it, then they might not vocalize it. Made sense. Yeah, as, as absolutely is. Certainly, you know, we have representation on the building and finance. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Your involvement and your presence would be important. Like Bruce said, it's it's an aggressive timeline. It's one, it's one that <gasps> kind of you can go like that a little bit. So we're not gonna we're not gonna you know rush it to get to the end. But 
we feel we feel good about what we created. I guess my only feedback potential concern on the timeline is the huge, it, it seems to me as I read this that the building advisory committee and the finance advisory committee have probably the biggest goal in all of this because once there is a finalized plan it goes back to them to what? To yeah, a big role. yeah so, so within what do they have any parameters on what they're allowed to do after it's come that far? Speak to the, which stage you think you I'm talking about the November 15th um, and 20th dates. As far as turnaround after those dates? No, I mean, so it, we've had a, the final recommendation presented to the board yeah. without comment. Then we've had two more fora, forums. Yeah. And then they're going to go back to those two committees. And I wouldn't think we would want them completely upending what's been done to that Thank point. Thank you. No, they will not. It won't come that the enrollment space, so they, they will be, have been going through processes as it relates to safety and security. And ultimately, the committee and the subcommittee will start to, like, again, criteria is like, this is what the community is saying about these priorities. Um, so that group is going to be working on the development of that. They won't come to the the options that come before them and say, mm, "No, we're not going to we're not going to do that." They'll look to to right as far as the building advisor. Yeah, we're already working on prioritization and costing of all of the all of the needs other than enrollment space. So we're already working on safety and security on accessibility on those other kinds of issues in terms of costing them and uh, applying a prioritization or scoring rubric to them to determine which are the highest needs in each of those areas. So that work by the time November 15th rolls around will have already been done and what we'll need to do then at that time is fold the space recommendations into that mix uh, as far as the building advisory committee. In terms of the Finance Advisory Committee, um, they are, their charge is to develop a funding plan for what the recommendations are, not to eliminate Modify. or change okay. the recommendations. Okay. Uh, and we, we, so that's just a matter of updating what is our bonding capacity and what are the financing mechanisms that are available for that and how much need are we talking about. Uh, and so we're already doing the prep work of what is our bonding capacity, uh, how much does a penny of levy equate to an additional bonding capacity. Uh, so those groups are working more on implementation yes. rather than on, like how do we implement what we decided yeah. to do as opposed to what do we do. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. A good question. Other questions, comments? So just to be clear, safety and security and enrollment at the moment being treated as two different things and then they'll come together. Yeah, so the, the work with cooperative strategies is all about just the enrollment space issue. So they're not doing anything. They only said that since we're going to put together the survey, and their surveys are really sharp. So when they when they're going to create this survey on the 22nd to 31st, or when they're going to put a survey out to the public, it's not going to come in like, it's not just straight like a, a Google form or a click here. It's, they create like a video presentation that'll have like a lot of things related to this particular option. They'll ask you to click on the video, watch the video, <coughs> read the information, offer your response, you know, to this option. Here's the next video, option two, you know, watch the video, offer your response. What, what they had said is, we had talked about the value of being able to go back out to the community again with a more narrowed list, and they said that they'd be willing to incorporate that into their video, so we're not, we made the, we thought instead of throwing out, as, trying to not, not survey as much as we possibly can, try to reduce the number of surveys, but still get the information. All right. You have what you need from us? Yeah. And please, please, again, I, because I know that this is the first time your eyes is, have gotten on this. Um, if there's anything that you have following it, please don't hesitate to, to reach out to me.
Right, we now have our second opportunity for public comment. Um, I'd like to make a couple comments on what John just shared, and I don't mean to be contrarian, I just want to put some comments on the table. I mean, I've been a long time district parent, I'm a current district grandparent, so I think I have a right to like share some comments. Um, my favorite educational movie is, Car is uh, Dead Poets Society, when Robin Williams, the very famous scene at the front of the movie where he takes his class into the foyer of the school, and he introduces them to the concept and the phrase carpe diem, which stands for seize the day, gather ye rosebuds while ye may which basically means you have to get going. And that, as he said, sooner or later, we're all going to be food for worms because we're going to grow old and die and we're going to go into the ground. And for any of us, we don't know when that time will come. Think about the kids in mass school shootings. They didn't think their time was going to come, right? It can happen anytime, which means we have to get moving. So on these two objectives, to me, enrollment space and school safety, enrollment space is great. I think what John laid out is perfect. It, it, it's not a time sensitive thing, but to me, school safety should be broken out and fast tracked because it's urgent. It's right now. It's today. We're getting prank phone calls. We didn't think this would ever happen to our district, but it's happening. And so we better be smart about it. We better break it out and move carpe diem on it. So that's that point. My other hope has to do with Jessica and Parker. Last year, as I remember, Joe and Trinity sat at this table. And it, and it didn't go past me that Jessica and Parker are now sitting at this table. Now, this is not a bad table. This is a really good table, really good people. <laughs> But the point being, this is the board table. And from my standpoint, take it for what it's worth, Joe and Je uh, Parker and Jessica deserve a seat at this table as student advisors to the board. And I would like, I'd love to see them up here one at a time, right? Uh, at the next board meeting. Okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other public comments? All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. With a motion to approve the consent agenda 8.02, 8.03, and 8.04. Is there an 8.04? Yeah. Check register. It's not on mine either. It's not on mine. It's on the paper copy? No. It is on the on the electronic. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay. So we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good.